Hey everyone, it's Justin. Thank you for watching and welcome to my house. In this video, I want to talk to you about adaptive authentication in ServiceNow. I'm in my PDI and I ran across this feature because I was exploring a new Utah feature around Identity Center and none of my mobile devices were showing up. And I do use mobile devices when I'm accessing um, ServiceNow from my PDI or for our demo stuff for, for my real job, my day job. So um, this is my mobile device showing up here as a registered mobile device, but I want to show you how I got this to work. So um, there's a plugin that you need to install called Adaptive Authentication. I won't show you that business because it's kind of boring, but once it's installed, you're going to get a new um, menu, and I typed it in incorrectly already, Adaptive Authentication. It's hard to type stuff like that and talk at the same time. And uh, the first thing I had to do was go set some properties under authentication policies. Now, I was just following the, um, the instructions on the doc site, so nothing fancy there. Uh, I didn't have to look up anything, but I did have to go to properties. And all I did, everything is default except for the first two checkboxes. Um, let's get into the right application scope here. We'll go to global. Um, so once I was in uh, the right application scope, then I was able to um, I'll check those two boxes at the top. So enable the authentication policy and enable the device trust flow. Once those were set, then I went into the um, same menu, adaptive authentication, and there is a pre-authentication context. Now this is where, um, again, I'm setting everything's default. The default is a deny policy, and the deny policy is a global blocking policy. I didn't change any settings on theirs. I didn't put any conditions down here or any policy input. And this particular deny policy has its own conditions that you can set on there as well. I didn't want to filter by IP address. I didn't want to filter by device or anything like that. You can do all that. This is Justin's PDI. I don't need to get into all that mess. But I think it's worth mentioning that there's a, there's a policy type of allow, which means you have to specify the criteria for someone to be allowed. And for deny, you'd have to specify the criteria for someone to be denied. Now that's kind of counterintuitive. What that is saying is the default policy is allowing everybody because I haven't added any filter conditions, which is what I want in my case. Um, but that would be counterintuitive to where you're trying to control access um, to this. So you might, in a deny policy, find reasons to actually deny, and then it would allow everything except what you've specified to deny. And if it's an allow policy, you would specify the criteria of what is allowed, and then everything else would be denied. Um, again, so that kind of counterintuitive for me, but made sense uh, once I kind of wrapped my head around it. So having that out of the way, once you get all that set up correctly, um, then we're back to, similar to Identity Center, you go back to your profile, and my menu's acting up again. This has been happening to me in Utah, and it's driving me nuts. Let's see if this menu is working. Yep, just not my menu over here. I'm glad this is being recorded live so you guys can see. I can't get into my application picker. I can't get into sidebar. I can't get into help, and I can't get into my... Uh, menu there, but there's another way to get to your profile that I learned in making another video is you can go this way to self-service my profile and then here once this is once you've set up those adaptive authentication policies you're going to see a register a trusted mobile device a related link now this link did not show up for me until I logged out and logged back in after setting those policies and uh, setting the properties and setting that policy in fact I didn't change anything on the policy but after I set the properties this thing showed up only after I logged out and logged back in but once I was in then I was able to get to here where I could see there was nothing here when I did it so that is actually my pixel phone uh, my physical device but we're gonna do one here live and I'm gonna register a device with you all and yes I'm probably gonna have to blur some things out but the fun, more fun part of this is going to be getting this to work with my emulator. So I'm going to do some screen magic, but essentially um, next time you see me, I'm going to have my emulator. Okay, guys, I'm back. I'm done editing. Uh, so what I did in the background is essentially, so you don't think this is like I'm hiding anything from you. I took my QR code. I took a screenshot of it. And to get this into my emulator, I went into the settings from emulator and set the camera wall to be the QR code so that I can actually scan this in my emulator and you can see what this experience is like. So no magic other than me trying to get my emulator to work. Um, but now that I've got that, let's get my mobile device back up. And here we go, Justin's Utah PDI. Now this is what I found interesting after registering this. I'm gonna go ahead and close this window. 
is that now when I attempt to log in from my mobile device, even though I have um, my authenticator key set up, you can see that in another video uh, where I did a, um, uh, adaptive authentication. Um, if I log in now, it's going to prompt me to register the device before I can even do anything. So this whole screen is new for me. Log into your laptop or desktop, go to your user profile, everything I just showed you is a second ago, and then I can scan my QR code. That's going to open up the camera, we'll give it permission to use the camera. And remember, I put that image on my wall, so let's just turn the window here. Yep, that moves me forward. There's my QR code, can you see it everybody? I just gotta get into this room. Isn't this fun? This is surprisingly difficult because I'm having to use my keyboard in a way that I don't usually use it. There we go, I got my QR code. Success, so now it's going to register this device. I think the setting is like four hours or something like that. Um, but once it's registered, then I'll get the opportunity to actually log in and then with my username and password. And then once I have my new username and password in there, um, I'll get to provide my authenticator key, which I probably should pull up on my other device so I have that ready to go and you're not waiting on me. But here comes the login screen and I'm going to type in ADMIN as my username and then I'm going to blur out the password that's showing on my clipboard, but that's the right password, and then I'm going to log in. And um, this is actually something else uh, right now. This is setting, uh, asking me for my authenticator app. No, I don't want to save the password, so let's go away. Um, but I can also get a verification code sent to my email. I think that's a new Utah feature. Um, if it is, look for another video on that. But let's go ahead and put in my verification code, um, which of course, again, I will blur out. But my authentication code is down here. Three. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. See, I almost said it out loud again. And we'll verify. And that will complete the login process to my mobile app. So a couple of things happening there. One is we're restricting where people can log in from the mobile app by making them come here and register their mobile device. Uh, first, so that's giving ServiceNow uh, visibility into that device and everything. Then we're authenticating again after that registration. I consider the registration kind of like an authentication, even though it's not. Um, then I'm authenticating with my username and password, and then I'm providing multi-factor authentication using my Google Authenticator, or as you saw there, my email address. And now I'm successfully in the instance, even though the app just crashed. I don't know if you saw that, but the app just crashed. So let's head back to this page where we can see our trusted mobile devices. And let's see in Identity Center, do we see both of my mobile devices now? My actual Pixel 7, or and plus my emulator. My emulator, I think, is a Pixel 4-ish kind of time frame. So let's see what loads up here. All right, now back in the Identity Center, it's acting a little bit wonky. Uh, I have to be clear there, it's acting funny and I had to do some things to get it to work, but okay, login history is updated and what I wanna see is do I see both my mobile devices? And I do. So I've got my Pixel 7, which was there before, but now I've got my Android SDK G Phone 64 underscore x86 underscore 64. And if I show more on that one, I think I'm just gonna show that the status is active, but that is what I wanted to show you in this video. It is adaptive authentication, but essentially a way for you to control how people are accessing your ServiceNow instance, and you saw the policies there, and then now you saw, and when you go to see your profile, how to register a mobile device so people can use the ServiceNow mobile app to log in and access your instance. So that's it, I got an error, so I'm gonna hide it with my head. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, or share it with somebody who you think might be interested in using adaptive authentication with their ServiceNow instance. And until next time, don't forget to always be learning.